What's up my stat stars? In this video, we're gonna take a quick look at how to describe the distribution of a quantitative variable through a graph. Now, we don't have all the data in front of us, so we can't calculate specifics like mean, median, standard deviation, all that fun stuff, but we could definitely learn a lot just by looking at the graph. But there's a couple key things that we gotta make sure we talk about, so let's get right to it. Now, there are four main things that we gotta talk about when we describe the distribution of a quantitative variable. The shape, the center, the spread, and any potential outliers that you may see. But a fifth item that I like to add is context. You always wanna make sure that you describe those four things in context to the problem. Now, so let's start off with shape. Shape could be things like skewed right, skewed left, symmetric, uniform, bimodal, maybe you notice a big gap or some clusters in the data. When it comes to center, you want to make sure you talk about one single value that you think describes the data the best, a value that kind of evenly balances. Now, oftentimes we're thinking about the mean and the median here, but remember, we don't have the actual data in front of us to calculate those two values. When it comes to spread, we want to think about the overall spread, min to max, but we also want to think about where we see the large majority of data. Finally, without the actual data, again, we can't calculate the specific formula to show us what the outliers are, but we could definitely take a look at the graph and see if we see any values that are like really far away from everybody else. But at the end of the day, make sure that you're doing all of that in context to the problem. Let's take a look at a couple examples. In this histogram here, we see the weights of 31 sumo wrestlers. Now, when we take a look at that, first we wanna make sure we talk about the shape. We clearly see the shape is slightly skewed to the right, with the majority of the data a little bit on the left side, and it's slowly kind of fading off on the right. Now, the center looks to be somewhere around 200 to 250 pounds, and we see that the range of the data goes all the way from as low as 100 to as high as 450 pounds. However, it does look like the majority of the wrestlers weigh from 150 to 250, 300 pounds. Now, we also don't see any major outliers. We definitely see that to the right-hand side, the data is lessening and lessening, but we don't see any significant values that are very far away from the rest of the data. But notice how as I described that, I did so in context to the problem. I was talking about pounds. I was putting units on numbers. And I was also mentioning the fact that these were the sumo wrestlers. So again, that very first sentence should always start off with the distribution of these 31 sumo wrestlers is and then start off with the shape and then move on to the center and then talk about the spread as well. All right, that's it for this graph. Let's take a look at another one. Here's an example where we're looking at 87 gas mileages recorded from 87 different four-door sedan cars. Now, when we're asked to describe this distribution, it's pretty clear that it's skewed to the left. We also can see that the center is roughly around 41 to 44 miles per gallon. The spread it looks like it goes all the way from 17 to 53, but if you take a close look because of that skewness, the large majority of data is 35 to 50 miles per gallon. Are there any outliers? Well, without the actual data, it's hard to say for sure. We don't certainly see any one car that seems to be way different from everybody else. But that lower interval, somewhere around 20 miles per gallon, could possibly be an outlier. We'd actually have to have the data to look at it. So again, there's a great dis distribution, and I'm describing it talking about the shape, the center, and the spread, and any possible outliers. Now, on a histogram like this, we can actually learn a little bit about the mean and the median. Now, we don't know exactly what the mean and the median are because we don't have the actual data values in front of us, but we can get a good representation of how they would compare to each other. Now, a formula to find the location of the median is the data size, the sample size, plus one divided by two. So 87 cars plus one divided by two is 44. That doesn't mean the median is 44. That means that the location of the median is the 44th value. So if we start adding up how many cars are in each interval, starting at the bottom, we found that the 44th car is somewhere in the interval 41 to 44 miles per gallon. So that tells us that the median is somewhere from 41 to 44 miles per gallon. Now, because the data is skewed to the left, the mean is going to be lower than the median. That's because when data is skewed left, the mean is going to get pulled towards those few values on the left. Now, even though there's not a ton of them, the mean does have to take all of them into account. So when there's a couple low values, the mean is going to be a little bit lower than the median because of that. So again, it's really cool that we could use a distribution to describe it, but we could also use a distribution to understand a little bit more of the details in terms of the mean and median, even though we can't calculate all those individual values. 
In this final example, we're looking at histograms of the body lengths of a sample of insects. Now, when we're talking about the shape here, we definitely see something we call bimodal. We see two peaks, a peak on the left and a peak on the right. So the shape is bimodal. You can also say it's somewhat symmetric because if you put a line down the center, we do see a peak on the left and a peak on the right, and it could be labeled a little bit symmetric. But the big characteristic here for shape is bimodal. Now, when it comes to center, it would be easy to just look at the center, which would be about 6.5, but that actually isn't really a good center because if you look at it, very little data is actually around 6.5, and the center is something that's typical. You might want to say there's two different centers, one at that lower cluster of 5 and one at that upper cluster of 8. Now, when it comes to spread, we definitely see a large spread here, but we might want to say that we see actually two sets of data, one at those lower values and one at those higher values. So as the overall spread looks pretty large, we do see a cluster of data in the lower values and a cluster of data in the upper values. Now, what could be causing this? Maybe we're looking at two different species of insects, obviously longer versus smaller. Could be a gender thing, male versus female insects. But again, when we see two clumps of data, there's really more to the story that's making it that bimodal. But again, the key distributions, or excuse me, the key description of the distributions here is the shape, bimodal, the center, might want to give two centers, and then the overall spread. Are there any outliers? I don't really think so. It's hard to tell for sure without the data, but doesn't, I certainly don't see one interval that's far away from the rest of the data. So that's it. Describing a distribution should be really, really easy. Just want to make sure you give some general characteristics, shape, center, spread, and outliers, but in context of the problem. Don't forget things like units, and always start off by saying the distribution of, and then fill in the blank with the context of the problem, and then go right into skewed left, symmetric, skewed right. Don't be too blah and just give generic values that have no units or no context around them. All right, hopefully you learned a lot, and next time you see a graph, you'll be able to describe it really easily.